Hi, I'm Jared. I'm Brittany. I'm Ian. And, and we, we are Louisiana, Louisiana Entertainment, Entertainment Experience. Experience. Hey, that worked out pretty good. This is Louisiana <laughs> Entertainment Experience. I'm your host, Jared Guillory, and I'm sitting here with the beautiful Brittany Poole and Mr. Ian from Brittany and Arugaroos. I guess I got Arugaroo. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Doing all right. Doing great. Thank you for good. having us today. Well, looking forward to getting to know Brittany and talk about all the things she's got working and, and, and going on. Uh, Brittany, let's get started. Uh, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Arkansas. Uh, I was raised on the largest goldfish fish farm in the world. So, yeah. You were raised on the largest goldfish <laughs> yes. farm? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever had a goldfish, it probably came from my home. The crackers? No. No, actual goldfish. Yeah, okay, like feeder fish, koi, all that good stuff, you know. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was not expecting it. I mean, <laughs> I mean I've, I've, I've heard I've, I've lived on this, but goldfish. Yeah, goldfish. As pets or what else do they do with them? Uh, you can use them for fishing. You can use them, um, you know, aquariums at big, nice, fancy restaurants or whatever you want to do, koi ponds, whatever you're into. They got the fish for it, so. <laughs> you know, I really was not expecting that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, Brittany, I, I've heard you sing, and matter of fact, we're going to attach some of her um, songs to this to this video. Uh, the last one you sung when we recorded, what, what was the name of it? Uh, Chafalaya. A Chafalaya is pretty interesting. It's really cool. Yeah. The story is basically, you don't want to mess with a man. Yeah. And, and you don't wind up sleeping in a Chafalaya. Mm -hmm. And you with ended, the fishes. With, with, with the fishes. It's the goldfish. That's where yeah. it comes from. Huh? Anyway, and when she ended, she put out this little laugh both times we did it. And she said it wasn't part of the song, but but I think the intention might be there. Yeah. You got something you need to tell us about? No, you know, just, you know, don't mess with crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand. Um, what influenced you? What got you started? What made you think, this is what I want to do? I sang all the time growing up on the farm. I'd just walk around, you singing know. Singing to the fish. Singing to the fish, to the birds, whatever would listen. And uh, I guess someone heard me when I was young, and they got me in church, and I started singing at church. And... Uh, I kind of gave it up for a little while, and then I got in high school my senior year. I was really bad at softball, but I always tried to be good at it. And finally, I was like, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to try choir. And I did choir and got all state and all this stuff. And I was like, this is something I really, really want to do. Like, So I jumped back into it. And then when I went to college, I put it back on the back burner. But after I graduated, I got into it again. So you never know, you know. <laughs> yeah. What uh, what you go to school for? Uh, computer science. Computer science. <laughs> nothing to do. You mean not, nothing to do not, with music. Nothing to do with fish. My major actually at first was music, but uh, the guy was like, "You can't read music. You're wasting my time." And I was like, "All right, well, I'll just get a plan B, and then you know, hustle on the side and do what I actually love." You know, mm -hmm. most of the time when I'm not in school. Yeah, I'm still I'm still thinking about the fish. <laughs> the fish is still on your mind. How many fish? Uh, billions, billions. Yeah, like eighty billion. I think, really? Is how many fish we raise out there? Yeah. So I guess you didn't name them all. No. A lot of no, they're all Goldie. Goldie Han. <laughs> yeah, and... you know, yeah. This whole pond gets one day. <laughs> um, Ian, let's, let's, let's include you in this. Uh, you're one of the Rugaroos. Yes. And um, what's, where are you from? What's your start? How did you get into music? The whole nine yards. I'm from New Orleans. Oh, uh, really? I grew up hearing, hearing people playing on the street. And uh, you know, I was uh, born, I say born, I you know, kind of got, really got into music in the early 90s with the whole grunge thing that came out. And, mm -hmm. Everybody played guitar, so I tried to do it too, and ended up having a knack for it. And uh, many, many years later, uh, God, that was a long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, pretty much made my living doing it ever since. Uh, I went to school for music, and then uh, do a good bit of uh, good bit of private teaching on the side. Which uh, the current situation, I've had to move everybody to FaceTime, which has actually turned out to be really cool. It's a different vibe, but it's. Uh, still trying to make it happen, you know. Trying to trying to trying to keep it going, doing this little. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, outbreak. it's outbreak. Yeah, it's a weird situation. I actually watched that movie on Netflix the other night. <laughs> Probably not something to watch. I right watched now. so much Doomsday Preppers before this happened. Like I binge watched, and then it happened, and I was like, oh, I'm not prepared. And I've been making fun of these people for like the last ten seasons of this show. So you, uh, you prepared? Okay, you could tell us. How much I'm like kind of prepared. Uh, I was the one that like waited the two weeks, thinking that it wouldn't be a big deal, and I'll go get my toilet paper later. And then you know, a month goes by, you can't find toilet paper, so. We ordered a bidet. Um, really? I'm not about it. It's not. It was How could you not enjoy a bidet? It's just not enjoyable. It's like scary and it's cold and like I don't know. It's not. It's not my favorite thing. I much prefer toilet paper or baby wipes or just anything else really. You know, coffee filters work. 
coffee filter. <laughs> I'm not a coffee drinker, but I could definitely, yeah, I might have to go pick some of those Where's up. the hose in the backyard? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I, I just have images of bidets since that has become something again because of this current situation. Yeah. And I'm wondering how many kids then walked up to it, saw it shoot water and think it was a little fountain? Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, oh man. You know, that would have been me as a kid. Ooh, look. That's going to be you a know? different kind of epidemic, you know? <laughs> Scorn them for life. Yeah. Like, I drank from that, Mom. You know? Oh gosh. Um, in the entertainment world, we're all kind of connected. You, you run across this guy, like, um, we talk about where we met, and actually, I don't think you remember, but we met a few years ago at a party. Yeah, I and, probably don't remember because we were at a party. Yeah, we were there. I don't remember any of my parties. I mean, either, I don't go to parties sober for, me. For yeah. understanding that. <laughs> and I just remember, and I remember meeting you because I think your name's unique. The Pool Last Night. Yeah. And you were talking music with a, another musician. I think he might have been in a band that you were in at the time. And, mm -hmm. and he was more connected to the party. And, and we did introduce, and you guys over there, and I was over there. Yeah. And then once I heard your live performance... Well, I say live performance, I never got to see you live, but via Facebook and, and social media, it's like, hey, this is definitely somebody we got to talk to. She's great. She's got a whole lot of things working to get in. So learning to meet people through all of these weird things, you kind of get connected and get to know oh, each other. Oh, yeah. The way we know each other is like the craziest story. Like the, That's it's, awesome. Did we hear about it? Yeah. Uh, so I moved to Nashville to learn how to write and... Um, you know, I got a publishing contract and I was doing all these things. And I went and did this children's charity banquet um, in Kentucky. And one of the guitar players that played for the children's charity knows him, used to live in New Orleans. And I was like, oh, I love New Orleans. I'm actually from Louisiana, just moved to Nashville. And a year goes by, I don't talk to this guy again. And then um, I decided I was moving back home to Louisiana and I wanted to find a guitar player and someone I could really write with. And he tells me about Ian, but had I not moved to Nashville, had I not said yes to the children's charity, had I not made the point to talk to one of the 15 musicians about music. And you know, it's just so many little details that we have an album now, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just crazy. And, 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 it, and it's awesome. And that whole big story about how we met was to get you to to open up about some of the people you met doing this. This is yeah. a, a, a chance to name drop and talk about some of the people you met, whether they're higher level celebrities or or just real good musicians. Who's some of the people you met and got to play with? I've uh, I've jumped on stage with a few people that I think are really cool. Big Earl and the Sexual Biscuits. He plays at the Floor Bama, and he's kind of a comedian singer, but like. I didn't care. I just like, hey, big girl, can I jump up here with you, man? He was yeah, like, oh, I'm you sure can't. he was quite. Yeah, he's like, oh, you can't sing. He's like, I'm gonna let you get up here and mess it up. And then he was like, I don't know how to follow that, <laughs> you know, like I do comedy. <laughs> but uh, I've gotten up with, um, you know, a couple fiddle players. Um, her name is Cedra and Dina. They're sisters and they're Bistados. Um, they're from the north and they're like the best fiddle players I think in the United States. They play everything. I got up and played with them in Nashville. Um, you know, a few different musicians. I got up and danced with Sir Mix-a-Lot at Route 92 okay, in Youngsville. Uh, and he you signed know, an autograph for me, yeah. Brought in our horizons. <laughs> we ate birthday cake. It was his birthday. I don't know if he remembers me, but it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, yeah. Who's some of the musicians, especially being out in New Orleans, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've actually built most of my career out of Baton Rouge, but mm -hmm. uh, that's a long story. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, oh God, the last project I did was with, uh, did uh, did Chuck D, Public Enemy solo record. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we did a did a project with Mavis Staples from the Staples Singers. Oh, really? That was really cool. She was super cool. Um, really nice lady. I mean, she's God. I mean, she's 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 getting up there, but she don't quit. Mm -hmm. so, well, that's that's the way it again. worked. And uh, been a bunch of people in between here and there. That was the last thing I did. Um, <clears throat> some of the people around here, like Sonny Landis, just blew me blew me away. That's uh, from the guitar world. I got a buddy named Justin Lewis in Lafayette. In my opinion, <clears throat> might be the best session guitar player in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, he's amazing. He. Uh, he does everything out of his house and he's awesome at it. I've met so many people who just make me go, okay, you're good. You're really good. They you. There's substance there. Well, there's a lot of, lot of real strong, strong musicians. Absolutely. Especially down here. I mean, there's other parts of the country have been uh, in around the world where there'll be one or two, but around here, I mean, anywhere from Cajun country all the way down to New Orleans, mm -hmm. you'll see, I mean, you could throw a quarter and hit somebody who's got real talent. Oh, well, sure. I, I think it's, it's sort we're, we're driven against each other. You know, you can't pick up a guitar around somebody who can play and act like you can play without them challenging you and, and actually making See you what you can do, yeah. <laughs> and if you think about it, I mean, what, Lane won American Idol, Joven's looking like he might mm -hmm. win this next season. I mean, 
these are both these are both cats from you know less than 150 miles from where we're sitting right now. Yeah. Louisiana yeah. entertainment is definitely something to discuss. Uh, another question I love to ask because I'm kind of a gear guy. I can't really play anything, but I like to mess with it. What's your favorite guitar? What's your favorite gear you like to use? Um, lately I've been doing uh been doing the Paul Reed Smith guitars, but uh, I found honestly the amps the most important part of the chain. I've been switched over to Bogners. Uh, I've been using those for years, and I don't think I could ever go back to anything else. Um, especially the Ecstasy. He's got a mini version of it now that's amazing and can do it at a reasonable volume that doesn't make the singer mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I, guess, mad at I you. guess we have those uh, conversations. <laughs> so, Brenda, do you, uh, do you actually play any instruments? I dabble on guitar and uh, piano. Like, whenever I write acoustic or whatever by myself, which I only know a handful of chords, um, you know, I usually play on a Taylor and then... I have my little Casio keyboard <laughs> that I play piano on, but I wouldn't say I'm professional like him in any way. I can just kind of throw together a melody and maybe pitch it to somebody to make it way better than, mm -hmm. you know. But you but you get it. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can hear it in my brain, and usually I'll voice. just, mm -hmm. I'll, like, hum a melody to him or something, and he can just, like, just tears it up. Like, it's so Well, cool. again, I listen to <laughs> your songs that you sung that's going to accompany this video, and um, it, it's, it's incredible. Your Thank voice you. is, is so soulful, you know, Thank I mean, you. it just makes you kind of get the little goosebumps and stuff. Uh -huh. Who would be your influences? You know, everybody has Etta somebody. James. Etta James, for sure, first I and foremost. I can see that. Um, I love Ella Fitzgerald. I love Janis Joplin. I think her stage presence is amazing. I don't think there's anyone you can beat as far as, like, taking over a stage. And you don't even know she's looking at you. She's just up there having a great time. Um... Yeah, I would say I dip back whenever I pick my favorite artist because I think that they really paved the road that I'm trying to walk on, you know? Well, I can definitely see it because your voice is huge. Thanks. I mean, I mean, we did this with one microphone and an acoustic guitar and it sounded like you was on the biggest, cleanest PA I've ever heard. It's nice. incredible. Well, no slots on the guitar. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> no, not, not, not at all. Not, not, not. <laughs> if y'all notice, Hoyt walked in. <laughs> and uh, he's always going to like the musician because Hoyt's a, a, a guitarist also. So, uh, if it wasn't I'm, for Ian, those songs probably wouldn't Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It, it <laughs> they definitely wouldn't make works it. well together. He, yeah, he, he makes it. Um, what projects you got going on right now? Right now, we're just trying to figure out what to do with everything going on with the virus. We're trying to, you know, practice with the band, get our room set up. We want to start doing more um, posts on Facebook and YouTube. And we've been talking about maybe making some music videos. And, you know, it's just getting funds and stuff together to do that. And, um, you know, just making connections, radio interviews, trying to push the album. We're releasing a, we actually released a Chafalaya today oh, on wow. iTunes. Yeah. And uh, we released Nola Bound a couple of weeks ago. Every two weeks, we, um, we release a new song. So... We're just trying to get that out there and sell well, some merchandise. And uh, Brittany Poole and Aruba Rules at Chafalaya. Definitely look it up on YouTube. Yeah. On, on uh, YouTube and iTunes. And um, it's awesome. It's awesome. I get the love it. Yes, we do. BrittanyPoolandArugaRules.com. You can find merchandise there. You can read all about us, our bio. We have an um, EPK video that we use for promotion mm -hmm. to get shows. And a lot of interesting stuff on there. Press kits. Our calendar's currently empty. But so, <laughs> you know, you yeah. take a good time. We're doing what we can. Off. Yeah, because yeah. whenever things are really busy, it's like you don't have time to focus on those little things. So this is almost like a blessing because we're getting to really release these things properly because we have the time to sit and look at it and analyze it and make sure that it's right before we put it out. So good use of this time. Yeah. Because it is it is a real odd time for entertainers. You know, they shut down, you know, people talk about, hey man, people can't work or, you know, you can't go to work. They just erased our work. Yeah. Anywhere an entertainer would perform right now it's is gone. just not available. And I understand we have to do it our part do our part to get this under control and keep everybody safe and healthy. But it just completely stopped everything. And and I find it very unusual because an entertainer practice and repetition is very important to you because of because of uh you know, keeping keeping your chops going. Yeah. So uh a lot of well, yeah, it's any job. I mean, anything you take a few months off of when you go back, it's going to take you a minute to get back into it. But I know we're gung ho to do it. You know. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't. I'm, I can't wait to get back on the stage. <laughs> yes. it's, like I, it's a high you can't get like anywhere else. Going. It's I, the I best feeling in the world, and for it to be gone like that, it's like it's kind of depressing. Now, you know? have you guys been in doing any um, live video like the the? We the were out. Facebook actually, live stuff. most of yesterday. We're uh, we're still trying to get a room right and get try to figure out the camera angles and how to get decent audio. Got to fit five guys uh, and five instruments and you know yeah, all I mean, in one uh, room. Just, uh, we're still trying to figure that process out to because uh, I've seen some that have been put out that 
I wouldn't have felt comfortable putting out and we, we want to do it right. You well, know? Yeah. you know, <laughs> amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because a lot of people, and yeah, right, that'd be a good idea doing it in the bar outside. Um, and we were going to cook, right? So yeah, like, yeah. He's going to teach me how to well, cook. I'm going to tell him. Yes, I'm sure. People have to come. Oh, you're going to cook. I'm yeah. sure. I'm going to play and eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I, and, I, and I love the fact that you guys want to do it right, because because a lot of people, you know, everything takes steps. And, yeah. And, and oh, I can play, but if you don't have the lighting and the sound right, you you're not going to come across well. So Doesn't I'm matter glad how that well you play. Yeah. That and when y'all are ready to do it, hundred percent, link it to us. We'll help you out. Matter okay. of fact, I'm going to put Hoyt on stage uh, on on blast live. We can help <laughs> on some of these things you want to do, video promotion okay. and stuff like that. That'd and be awesome. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> we definitely appreciate that. I really feel like things like that are going to be crucial because I think the music business just changed. Entertainment mm -hmm. in, in general, live entertainment, I think, just changed mm -hmm. in front of all of us. Um, maybe some things for the better because it's actually leveled the playing field a lot. Yeah. Because on a given Saturday night, you know, even a major, even a major star, now obviously they'll have more followers, but... You know, somebody uh, at, at a smaller level, I mean, if you've got 2,000 people watching and 50 of them Venmo you, you did all right that night. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you got through, and, you know, there's actually a captive audience and a lot of people sit around looking for something that they haven't checked out before. People are actually, I'm finding, at least from what I've been observing, seem to be the, about the most open-minded I've seen them in probably the last 10 years. Well, I, I can see that. And, and your point is definitely valid because... Right now, because of having to sit home when most people would be out, you kind of fall into the same routine. You go out to the same place all the time. Well, that place is not available to you. So now you're kind of searching, you're kind of shopping. Yeah. So it's opening up and that's a good way of putting it, putting yourself out in front of people who wouldn't normally see you. And then when you're back on stage, they may come over to see you. you know? Right. Absolutely. And I've seen a couple of people who've done some really interesting things. Like there was a gentleman out of Baton Rouge named uh, Ray Giot. He, uh, he did something last Sunday. He did the entire Nirvana uh, unplugged record. Mm -hmm. Just learned the whole record just for the hell of it and <laughs> nailed it. Oh, cool. Um, I thought that was really cool because that's not his normal thing and um, what uh, what he would be doing with some of the bands he normally plays with, which he's mm -hmm. a fantastic entertainer. But he uh, he just did that on a Sunday and uh, it looks like he got, a, he got a lot of views and picked up a bunch of new fans. And just the fact that normally with a gig in musician i mean we generally to make a living at this you're working four or five days like you wouldn't have time you wouldn't have time exactly and this is giving you the opportunity to do so and and you so know that's just an example but i thought it was really cool like that's it's getting people thinking outside the box it's not just okay this is a bar gig we're going to play for three hours here's what we did last week let's do that mm -hmm. yeah yeah very good point um with that being said Again, I love the style of music. Your voice is incredible. Do you have any plans on doing anything in different genres or anything like that? I would love to. I, I call myself kind of a chameleon because as much as I do, I love um, blues and I love jazz. And I would mm -hmm. say that's like, that's my foundation. But I also have this folk part of me. I also have this rocker girl thing that I do. Yeah, like well, I have cool. all these different well, types of music I that I really enjoy. I put Hoyt on blast on this video. So now I'm going to do it to you. Okay. Uh, as we were talking about earlier, Hoyt and I have this project where we're going to do some music. So uh, yeah. maybe we can uh, talk you into singing on one of the songs. Call me. <laughs> I'm down. Hey, I'm down. Hey, see, Hoyt, it, it works hand in hand, buddy. <laughs> My uh, schedule's open. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, right now, if your music can go in the exact direction you'd want it to be, where would you want to be? Everybody has this plan that I want to do this, I want to do this. Where do you want to be? Where do you see yourself? Hey, Dad, where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I would say if you'd asked me that question a couple of years ago, I'd have been like, I want to be in LA. I want to be, you know, I want to be in Europe. I want to do, and that I think that all is great too. But like, I really wouldn't mind just being here. Like, mm -hmm. I love Louisiana. I love being around here. I love the music that um, I get to write that is inspired by living here. And I think the people and the culture and everything. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't mind just being a local artist. That would be awesome. And if it did go that far, that would be great too. You know, I'm happy either way, as long as I get to do my music. Um, but I would say that, you know, wherever the road takes me, I'm going to enjoy it. Definitely. Oh, so it's all about the music. Yeah. For me, it's just about Absolutely. the experience and where it takes me and, you know, that I'm enjoying it. And it's the best thing that I can put out that I'm something that I'm proud of. You know, I feel like a lot of people that get into the big times, sometimes they're second album might be something that's not really from them it's you know it's other songs that their company has picked for them and it's trying to shape them into this like pop thing that you know wear this on stage and you have to be this certain person and like i don't i would rather be genuine and just do what i love you know that's that's awesome we're looking at it that's pretty cool um thanks <laughs> it, it, 
hug your thumbs up, man. It's cool. And it kind of <laughs> caught me off, and, and, I, and I respect that. You know, a lot yeah. of I, I, a lot of people miss some opportunities or take opportunities and have to change what they've become. I, I agree with you, and I think that's awesome. Um, what's the what's the tomorrow we find out, which I know it's not going to be this soon, but the, the day we find out that the the curfews and the social distancing and all the clubs open again. What's first? What's 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 on the plan for Britney Pooh and the Ruby Roots? I want to sing every day. <laughs> <laughs> for every day that I didn't get to be on stage, I want to sing that many times. Like, I just want to hit it hard, really, honestly. I want my shooting game of pool with the fellas. Oh, man, pool. <laughs> I so miss billiards, yes. Guys, uh, you brought up something in billiards. Zachary. I spend a lot of time, whenever I'm in and whenever I'm in downtown, I spend a lot of time at El Paso's in New Iberia. It's a restaurant. Yeah. And I have my own spot at the bar. Mm -hmm. It's funny. When everybody looking for me, they need to talk to me. They just come That's in and look. Position. That's me. That's they have amazing quesadillas over there, too. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And I... free advertisements. Uh, yeah. Uh, El Paso, y'all owe us something for this. Well, I've spent so much time there, and honestly, so much money. They hired my daughter as a waitress. My 19-year-old. Oh, nice. It's like I invested in it. I'm probably just paying back some of the money I spent. But that's besides the point. Well, we went in to pick up a to-go order and they had got real busy and she was with me and she's the type of person she just jumped in and started helping yeah so since she jumped in and we were stuck there I kind of snuck back and sat in my spot for a minute you know and I had a margarita and I was just so happy I just can't wait <laughs> and as, as much as I want to be back on the stage and I can't wait oh my god I can't wait to be back on the stage I want to I, 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 I want to drink at El Paso man yeah <laughs> so it's, out, it's the little so, things really so, yeah so outside of music and performing what do you personally, Brittany, want to do once this is over? I want to be able to sit around a bonfire, like, not six feet apart, you know? Like, I, I want to be able to cook with people and, like, not worry about, did I touch this spoon? Or I need to, like, go clean this and, like, you know, I don't know. It's just nice to be, like, normal and do everyday things. Like, when I go to Walmart, I don't want someone to stare at me like I'm crazy because I'm not wearing a mask. Like, it's just <laughs> little stuff like that, you know? Ian, same question, buddy. Oh, where do I start? Um... Pool with the fellas? Pool with the fellas. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. The beach. Pool with the fellas. Uh, go Mexican food sounds good. You got me thinking about yeah. food. <laughs> my whole, my whole my, love food. My brain just steered that direction. <laughs> Waffle House after a gig with the fellas. Yeah, Brittany, she's yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. you're in a band together, you're, you're the fellas. I know. Right. I said we're trying to fit All five guys in our band room. Like, oh, that sounds guys. fantastic. Yeah. Actually, don't get me wrong. Actually, I've been enjoying cooking. I've been actually learning a little a lot more about how to do it at home. Uh, okay, I, I saw a funny meme, and it was a question. I'm going to ask you both. When this is over, which meeting do you need to go to? Or which meeting do you need to go first? No. Hey, hey, I'll wait watchers. <laughs> Oh, Weight Watchers. <laughs> Weight Watchers. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I a A for me. <laughs> <laughs> I needed Weight Watchers a long time ago, so it's going to be A for me. Um, well, I tell you what, I did enjoy. One more question before we go. If you had the opportunity to tell somebody, and this is going to be a hard one, anything about you. Oh, man. I was hoping he didn't what say What is that. this? We're going to play one round. We're going to play Big Boo. I'm going to finish your question. No. After, okay. after that, you might not be able to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm finished the question. If you had 30 seconds to tell, let's go with the world. Hell, we're famous. This is the world. The world watches us. The whole world. Okay. The whole world. Britain, the whole world. All of them. All of them. All of them. You had 30 seconds to tell them what you wanted them to know about your music, your career, and who Britney is as a singer and Britney Pooh and the Rules. And I'm not putting you on the spot. I would say I'm genuinely just like an everyday person um, and that I'm just a really caring person and I feel music so hard. I'm very empathetic when it comes to music and, um, you know, when I write a song or when I do anything, I put my heart and soul into it. And for listeners, I hope that they can feel that too and I want them to know that when I do that, it's not just for me, it's because I want to say something that impacts them or like helps them get through something or inspires them in some way you know and i'm really just like an easy person to talk to you know no, and yes, i just feel like you know um it's good to to be personable with people and show them that you really care and um really listen to people when they talk because some of the music that i write is based on what other people have told me about their experiences so i would say in order to be the best person you can be, not even just as a musician, it's just to really try to connect with people. And that's all I want with music. It's just a connection. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I was hoping Hoyt had lost this. It's horrible, <laughs> but we're going to try Do we anyway. eat the beans? You get to eat jelly beans. Oh, lunch. <laughs> and what you do, it's very simple. Okay. 
You're gonna spin the little wheel, and we each got to do it. Uh, I think it spins better than Vox. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's, it's funny because we were just talking tech, about Harry the Potter. The tech guy. Please spin the bottle. Are these the Harry Potter jelly beans? beans? The, the tech guy always have a better way of doing it. You notice that? Um, but okay, it's okay. We're gonna do it. Real simple. We're gonna do how many rounds you want? Three. Just do one. That's good. What? what? You got to do at least two. Well, you should do one with everybody. everybody. I want to do two. He wants two jelly beans. <laughs> Show. Okay, we're gonna do two. Okay. <laughs> as long as I'm on this side of the camera, I get to win. Real easy. We'll let you go first. I hope it's blue because I don't like any of those other colors. Okay, but before you spin, I gotta okay. warn you. Blue is two things since we picked blue. It can be buttered popcorn or a peach barf. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So okay. Spin and see what color you get. Do I just flick it? Just flick it. Ah. <laughs> better than that. I thought it's been better in a box. Uh, tutti Fruity. So you get to pick the Is kind that, of peach that's one. That's this one? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Your turn. Oh my god. <laughs> it tastes like floor cleaner. <laughs> and dirt. These socks. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> it's got a good aftertaste though. Like the initial is floor, floor cleaner and grass and dirt. So canned dog food. Awesome. That would be the red one. <laughs> Where is the red one? It's actually that one right there. Oh no. Oh god. Oh god. It gets stuck in the teeth. <laughs> it's like really hard to get out. <laughs> Yummy. Yeah, I think we're gonna stop at one hoy. You had a What does it idea. taste like to you? It's canned dog food. And I have to do the purple one. Oh god, these are always nasty. I feel like we should get to pick yours because you made us eat this. Oh. oh. We went through three. <laughs> and nobody got a good one. <laughs> oh. Can I just try a blue? Like to Wait, see if it's nasty? Well. Now, here's the deal. One of the blue ones is good. And mm -hmm. one is bad. It's just which one you So get. I have a 50 50 chance to get this floor cleaning out of my mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alpo. Oh. It was toothpaste, but either way, I still feel cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> I still. <laughs> that was great. Thank well, you. Well, you got to clean up on a bamboozle. And I tell you what, <laughs> I enjoyed very much meeting you, and I'm sure our audience did too. And we'd like to thank you for coming to Louisiana thank Entertainment. You for us. And I definitely want to invite you back to cook. Yes. And like you said, if you want to learn something, maybe we do a cooking show where we'll cook together. Definitely. I need to learn how to cook Cajun food. For okay, sure. Well, I'm more on the Creole side, but we'll okay. do that too. We can work with that. For a real cook too. Okay. <laughs> Should I bring like a black pot or anything? I don't know. Oh, okay. you do this yourself and, and you tell me what dish you want to cook. And we'll... Smother potatoes. Teach me how to make smother potatoes. Okay. I need to learn how to make smother potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. But right. We'll get you back and we'll uh, maybe do smothered potatoes and uh, maybe a beef stew or something with it. I could eat that. I that love works. my beef and sure potatoes. Yeah. Okay, definitely. <laughs> so we're looking forward to having you back. We're going to try this again. Bring okay, guys. Band. Was that? Bring the whole band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you? How many? How, matter of fact, how big is the Rugaroos? Five altogether. Six if we have the horn player. and. <laughs> yeah. well, generally, you know. generally, there's five of us. Uh, yeah. But, uh, when we're able to do it, uh, depending on size of the stage and right. budgetary concerns, uh, mm -hmm. we'll have a horn player and backup singers. It can come up to about a seven, eight piece band. Okay, we, cool. We're yeah, yeah, depending on the venue. We've got arrangements up to a 12 piece, but uh, we're working there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, we'll do that outside of the bar and have a good time. So we'll try this again. I'm Jared. I'm Brittany Poole. I'm Ian. And this is Louisiana, Louisiana Entertainment, Entertainment Experience. Experience.